Hey everybody, my name is Marty and welcome back to the C++ SDL 2D platformer that is physics based and is going to be an RPG. And today we're going to get the entity class so we can actually use it in our rendering system. Now you're probably thinking, Marty, are you living in a cave? What happened to the room? Huh, I wish. So I painted the room, finally. Uh, I don't know if you noticed before, but I only painted like the area right behind where you'd actually, where, I, where I'd record. The rest I just uh, left. In a true programmer-like fashion, I just left it as is. You know, I hate to say it, but the programmer stereotype is kind of accurate. I am living in my parents' basement, but I'm not 18 yet. I'm only 16, almost 17. So I still got time to redeem myself. Guys, if you're living in a basement, it's all right. I'm living in a basement too. We're all in this together. Hey, but before we get started programming, shout out time. I'm gonna have to betray my allegiance to C++, but just temporarily. If you guys wanna check out Shaw Code on YouTube, He's a coding YouTuber who's just getting started. The guy's got nine subscribers here and he's putting in the effort. You can clearly tell like he's got 21 videos here. It looks like he's been uploading daily recently, which that's more than me. Phew. I should probably upload a little more. So if you guys are into Python, he does a lot of Python stuff here and hopefully I can get back in the good books of C++ again. I'm not a turncoat to C++, C++ all the way, but if you guys are into Python, just check out Shaw Code on, here on YouTube because I remember how hard it was when I started out on YouTube here. It's just, it's so hard to get started and it's so hard to keep going when you have zero views. I don't know how much this is going to help, but uh, Shaw Code, if you're watching this, just keep going. You're going to make it. You just got to stay with it eventually people do pile on. I remember that before I even got 100 subscribers, I had 100 videos. Well, that said, let's get programming. Alrighty, so open up your Sublime project, just right click it, open with Sublime Texture. Make it full screen by double clicking on it, otherwise you're just stuck in windowed mode. I mean, who likes windowed mode? That just sucks. I'm going to zoom in here so we can get nice readable text. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go into include along the left hand side in the folders. So go into include, we're going to open up entity.hpp, double click it and open up render window.hpp. Go into source along the side and open up entity.cpp, main.cpp and render window.cpp. And now what I like to do is I have main.cpp along the very left and then I like to have entity.hpp or whatever I'm working with and then the source file beside the header file. The very first thing we're gonna do is in entity.hpp, right where we have those doubles, replace those doubles actually with a flow. Now I said in the last episode that I was having an issue with the flow. And yes, I was having some issues with floats. However, I did find a workaround that we'll get to later. Replace those doubles with floats, go into entity.cpp and do likewise as well. Just go float. We don't need those rascally old doubles because those doubles are double the trouble. The reason is, I mean, the reason we go with a float here is that floats do take less memory and any way you can possibly conserve memory in programming is beneficial. Memory is like toilet paper. There's not a lot of it and everybody wants a piece of it. You can't make more memory very easily. You know, you, you try and split a sheet of toilet paper down in two and it's a messy business. It's too thin to actually use and then you just waste more toilet paper. And now we're actually going to fill out our constructor. So for now, we shall just simply initialize our X position, Y position, and our texture to be whatever our parameters are here. There's two ways of going about this. The first way is that inside the curly braces, like so, you can go P or X equals P underscore P underscore X, like so, very simple, right? Very clear, we're sending X equal to our parameter X. However, there is a way that is slightly more efficient and that's if we go before the curly brace and we add a colon and then we type x and then we open up some parentheses and inside there type p underscore x we're actually doing this slightly more efficiently when we do it so like so we have to copy the value once more and if you just do it using a member initialization list which is what these are it actually saves you just a little bit of time so when you have a constructor and you have parameters in the constructor and you want to set the member variables like x equal to the parameter variables like p underscore x then you want to throw those things in something called a member initialization list. So it looks kind of odd to open up some parentheses like as if this is a function, but it's essentially a function that sets x equal to the parameter p underscore x. Add a comma after that, set y, and we're gonna set that equal to p underscore y, and then our texture, set that to p underscore texture. All right, so with our x and y variables now defined and initialized, the only thing left to do is actually fill out our frame. If we go back to entity.hpp, we have a sdl underscore rect, which is our current frame of animation. So go back to entity.cpp, and right here, we're gonna go 
current frame dot x or dot yeah starts with x equals zero for now we're just going to hard code these in and if you're curious of what hard code means it means you're coding this with all the numbers engraved into it so it's like a rock and you just crunched all the numbers right in there hit enter and set current frame dot width equal to zero and set current frame current frame dot height equal to zero uh, zero what are we doing all right the width of our texture if we go into res along the side and go into graphics we check out our ground grass underscore one we can see it right in the corner right here it says that's a 32 by 32 pixels so because it's 32 by 32 pixels we've got a one or at least tell our program that's 32 by 32 pixels so that's all we're going to do in the constructor control save that and now we can start creating our entities oh and close out of that texture that's open just close that out all right go into main.cpp and be sure you have included a hashtag include entity.hpp all right let's scroll down and create ourselves a couple entities let's start with one entity right after we create our grass texture let's go entity so type entity and then you can call it whatever you want we're going to call this platform zero open up some parentheses and then the parameters we want to give it is where we want it to be on the screen we're going to start with let's say uh, 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down and the texture it's going to be a grass or grass texture and that with a semicolon control save it and if we ran it again we'd get nothing new displaying to the screen but we would be able to successfully create a entity so how can we get our entities that are in the game right here how we can how can we turn that position and texture into something on the screen well what we want to do is instead of passing a texture just a plain old texture through to our window.render call we want to instead pass a entity in as a parameter so take out that grass texture and go platform zero so we're going to pass in platform zero as a parameter and now we need to inform the render window that that the function render is no longer going to take a sdl underscore texture pointer as a parameter but will instead take a entity and we'll pass it by reference so it's going to take an entity by reference and we're going to call it uh, we can just call it p underscore entity the ampersand here means that we're passing it by references which means do not create a copy of this instead go track down the entity that exists in main dot cpp which is right here so track down platform zero go back to render window dot hpp if we just did not have that ampersand there it would actually create another copy of our entity that would pass through it which we don't want to do because that's a, that's slow that's the turtle way of life we want to get in the fast lane there's nothing wrong with taking it nice and slow no no we want to go fast we want to get where we're going as fast as we can all right so go to render window dot cpp and scroll down now right where we go window render right here replace that parameter there with a good old entity or good old friendly entity ampersand pass our entity by reference p underscore entity control save and let's scroll up and ensure we have included entity right here which we have not so at the very top of we render window.cpp just throw a quick hashtag include entity.hpp control save and then scroll back down to void render alrighty so now what we need to do is set our destination.x and our destination.y to be equal to our p underscore entity dot x and set our destination.y to be p underscore entity dot why this looks like it would work and this feels like it would work it just feels right but the very first error we get here it says uh -huh. it, this is uh say buddy float entity on underscore x that's private within this context so don't you dare go trying to take it that's that's a no-no so why is it we can't access the x and y variables the reason is if we go back to entity.hpp we'll notice that these are in the private section this means nobody can access them except for entity. Then a little question should be popping into our heads. How on earth are we gonna access our X and Y variables from other parts of a program? Well, to do that, we create a couple of something called a getter function. So we're gonna create two getter functions and the getter simply returns the value of what we have inside our private section. So we're gonna create two functions. They're gonna return a float float get x and it's not going to take any parameters we're going to have another float so it's going to return float so we've got float get x and get y control save that and then go into entity dot 
CPP and scroll down. So right after our constructor is created, we're going to want to fill out those two delightful functions. So hit enter and then go float and then say entity. So it's within the entity namespace or the entity class float entity and then get X and get X shall return our X variable. And that's all there is to a getter function. Hit enter and then go float. Do the exact same thing for Y, except you got to change the name to get Y. Open up some curly braces and inside their type return y and end that with a semicolon control save that and now if we go back to render window dot cpp and we replace this p underscore entity dot x with p underscore entity dot get x well now we will have been able to get through this access barrier by using a public function because the get x and get y functions are public therefore we can access them now right about now you're probably thinking marty this is crazy. If we go into entity.hpp, why is it we mark these variables as private only to hand them over to the user if they say pretty please and go through our nice little functions here? And you're probably thinking, what kind of psychotic merry-go-round is this? Well, it looks a little bananas, but the answer is we don't want to give full access to all class members in the entire program. It actually eliminates a lot of bugs. What we're doing is we're restricting the access to the data. So we're opening up our flow X and Y to the to be accessed, but we do not want to open up our current frame to be accessed. But it makes it a, more, a lot more secure and actually eliminates a lot of bugs by keeping it clear in your brain what exactly you can access within certain classes. While we're here, we're going to create two more functions and they're going to be getters. The first one here, we're going to go with a SDL underscore texture pointer and it's going to be called get textures to return our textures so that other parts of our program can see inside of our entities texture to see what it actually is and the last one will be a sdl underscore rect it will be our get current frame control save that and then go to entity.cpp to fill those delightful functions out so hit enter and then go sdl underscore texture pointer and then it's inside the entity class get text and then just simply go return our texture scroll down do likewise for our sdl underscore rect so say which data type we're returning which we're returning a sdl underscore rect it's inside the entity class and the function's name is get current frame. Open up some curly braces and inside there just simply type return current frame. All right, so with those four new functions here are our get X, get Y, get texture, and get current frame, we can now actually access all of our entities variables, but we can't change them, but we can read them. So it's read only. If we wanted to change our X to something, we'd create a function called set X that would set X equal to a different value. Going to render window.cpp, we can now set our source dot X equal to our P underscore entity dot get current frame dot X. And if we copy and paste that, control C, paste it right below, control V, control V, control V, paste it four times and replace this X right here with a Y, and then replace this X with a W, and then this X with a height. And now we also want to set our destination width equal to our current frames width and height as well. Dot width, DST dot Y equals P underscore, underscore entity dot get current frames. So then we can go with, and then P underscore entity, entity dot get current frame dot height and take out that 32 let's take out that extra space right there real quick take out the extra spaces that we do have here and now what we can do is instead of using this this uncreated p underscore text variable we can simply go p underscore entity dot get text and now if we control save it but trouble try and run it It'll probably have an error. It's guaranteed. What? It didn't have an error. I got an uneasy feeling now. Now what we can do is instead of messing with anything inside render window render, what we can actually do is go to main.cbp and change the position of our platform right here like so. So instead of 100 at 100, let's say, let's change it to 300. Control save it and hit F7 to compile and run it. 
Look at that, we just rendered it even further down. So this is looking good so far. We can actually move things around. Now, one more thing that we gotta do in order for this to actually run right is we go to render window.cpp and right where we scale our texture, we also want to scale our position. The reason being, if we only scale the size of our entities, but not the positions, they're all gonna bunch together. So we just gotta go multiply our get x by four or whatever scaler we're using and multiply our get y by four as well. So control save and F7, it might be off screen now. Yeah, it is off screen. So we'll have to use lesser values. If we go into main.cpp, instead of 300 down, let's just, let's just do 50. 50 pixels down. But this here will achieve pixel perfect drawing. So there we go. Now it's more reasonable. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know down below. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Make sure you code like. McFan Buck Trophy Mosquito is a humorous book written by my dad, Peter, and Mass. It's a collection of three hilarious humor stories and it's clean humor which that's a rarity today have you ever seen clean humor recently but clean humor that's actually funny the deal with clean humor is it's, it's hard to do very hard to do it's easy to make sick jokes and have your mind in the gutter and sure that might be fun for a while but that gets pretty stale after a while and it's guaranteed to have you doubled over laughing that's the mcvan buck guarantee let's have a little read the colored city tap water tasted really bad but not as bad as Grammy J's cough elixir, which she drummed up for us if she thought we coughed. The uncontrolled cough, of course, came shortly after gagging down her juice that she had made us for us to drink just two seconds earlier. It took years for me to build up enough immunity and self-restraint to drink this juice straight down without making a noticeable gag or cough. So now you're probably wondering, how can I get my hands on this hilarious McVan Buck mini book? Which is a prelude to make bigger McVan Buck to come. It's completely free. All you gotta do to claim it is just send your emailing address and full name to codegopher at gmail.com. We're shipping internationally, so no worries about that. Anywhere a plane or ship can go, this book can go. Remember, laughter is guaranteed.